What's up everyone, Sultry Seagull back again with the next video in the M2000C tutorial series. We're going to be looking at radar operation, how it works, the keybinds we need to set and general stuff like that. Let's start by getting our cockpit set up. First things first, let's get some light in here. Left Alt and Alt, turn on our flashlight so you can see what we're pressing. Turn all these dials up here everything nice and bright so we can see turn off our flashlight first thing we want to do make sure our IFF is panel is turned on it's not right click on this switch here it's part of the cold start I did earlier so normally that should be done before you're in the air and then we're going to switch our radar to operate it's currently in standby mode we're going to right click once on that turn it to operate and we can see it's now functioning here on our center display. So first things first, let's go through some key binds that we need to set up before we can actually get into how it operates. So we're going to go into our controls and we're going to, first things we need to set is the TDC. So TDC left, right, up and down. Those four need to be set to whatever you're happy with. These are my current settings here. That's how you move your radar cursor around and lock targets up. Another thing we can set is the PRF selector switch. So what I've done is I've selected, I've done PRF selector high, int, and low, inter high, intermediate, and low with right, alt, and I, and then PRF selector from low to intermediate to high with right control and I so I can cycle through the different modes. Next thing we want to set is our range. So radar range increase we've got set to equal so plus and radar range decrease we've got set to minus or dash. Next key binds radar antenna up and down I'm going to set those to page up and page down respectively. And then our radar azimuth, we've I've essentially set wide, wide, narrow, and middle. So wide is set to this, middle set to L, and narrow set to M. Next thing we want to look at is our IFF interrogate, which is the same as nose wheel steering. Set that to something you can remember. Our target lock, which is set to my joy button 2. And then, of course, we also want to set our system's command depress to home. This will enable us to unlock a target. That is it. Oh, and another thing is we want to do, you saw how I turned the radar active there with the switch, but I actually have it bound to a key. So I've got I to switch it on, and I've got Shift and I to put it into standby mode. So if I need to get, if I need to run away and I want to go cold or I want to sneak up on someone, I'm going to put my radar into standby mode. And then if I want to actually scan or lock someone up, then I'm going to turn it on. Okay, so let's get into the actual radar screen and display. So first things first, we've set our TDC controls up, down, right, left, there, and that, as you can see, moves the cursor in the middle of our radar screen. So our aircraft is represented by this triangle here, and these lines and this arc represent the cone that our radar is scanning in front of the aircraft. Not sure how many degrees it is. Looks like it's about, I don't know, 120 degrees or something like that. Don't quote me on it. Up in the middle here, we've got the range, the current range that the radar is set to, which in this case is 40 nautical miles. We can use our plus and minus keys to increase that. As you can see, I've just set it up to 80 miles and we've actually got a radar contact here. We're going to ignore that for now. I'm going to go down. We can go down as far as five miles and we can go up as high as 320 nautical miles. Sweet spot for me I've found is 80 miles. I don't generally pick anything up beyond that. 
Other thing we can do is we can scan up and down with the radar beam. So as you can see, it's currently set to scanning four lines vertically and they're sort of at a similar altitude to what we are at. Now there are times where we want to be scanning down and above us in order to make sure we have a full picture of what's ahead. In fact, we always want to be shifting the beam up and down to make sure we're scanning all altitudes. Because someone flying low, we're not going to pick them up if we're kind of set on our current settings. So using our page up key, we would scan up. And you can see the numbers increasing next to the cursor and we've lost that radar contact because we're actually scanning way up into the sky. So you can see at 37 miles, so this is the range that the cursor is from our aircraft, we're actually scanning between 30,000 feet and 60,000 feet. And if we go use our page down key and scan between 33,000 and 3,000 feet, we pick up our radar contact again. Okay, we can see from that chevron that he's actually heading towards us. It would be pointing away if he was moving away from us. So, now what we can do is if you... Oh, we've got another target popping up there. So now we can see we've got multiple targets here. And you see that little line under the arrow there. That means that actually we need to scan down. In fact, they're on the upper limit of our scan range. So if we go page down a little bit more, you see that line disappears. And the same if it's above it, we know that we need to shift our scan zone up so that we don't lose that contact on the radar. So we can use, as I said earlier, we can change our azimuth settings to middle this is middle here, so it's this narrow arc, and if we set it to narrow, it's a narrow arc still. And what this does is it actually improves the refresh rate, because as you can see, your radar can scan that a lot quicker. So in this case, now what we're going to do is we're going to scan, we're going to shift our beam up. Let's shift it back to middle. I like to keep it on middle most of the time. And there we go, our target's back up, we need to scan down a bit. And now what we'll do is we're going to use our target lock with the cursor over the target and we get a whole lot of other information. This target is now locked up and it's PID, so he doesn't know he's being locked up. What we would actually need to do is lock again, I'll show you how to do that in a bit. But first what we can see here is we've got added targeting information. So we've got his altitude, he looks like he's at 45,000 feet and he is 20 miles and closing and he is sort of hot onto us but at an angle you can see his direction of flight indicated by that arrow so that's the information here so what we can do is if we look at our HUD we can now see that the target is locked up there and we've got a little box around him and we've got here information on his range. So he's 13 miles away and he's a lot higher than we are. According to this, he's at 45, Angel's 45. He's up at 50,000 feet. I don't know what the hell he's doing up there. But anyway, that's, that's the information we can see there. Now, one thing to bear in mind is while we're locked into a target in the Mirage 2000, we cannot lock onto another target. We cannot see any other targets unless we are in low um, mode. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that entails, but if we if we are locked onto a target, we can't be in any mode other than this. So in other words, if there's any other targets out there, we're not going to see them while we're locked onto this guy. So if you want to maintain situational awareness, it's best not to lock on until you're actually ready to fire. So this guy is really high above us now. Let's see if we can keep him in line of sight. So another thing you're going to want to do with the target before you Okay, there he is. 
Okay, so another thing you're going to want to do before you actually engage a target is IFF. Do an IFF scan on him. Okay, we're we way too close to this guy. super high okay so anyway we're locked we're still locked on to this guy and the way you would do IFF is by using the nose wheel steering button so if we do that now you'll see that on the radar screen you get a double line across the top which tells you that your IFF is actually on which is a good thing to check for and over the target itself we'll get a diamond and a double line on either side that actually tells us that the target is friendly if that if that line remains single on either side of him and there was no diamond then you know that your target is enemy and that's how IFS works in the Mirage I'm going to level off now in fact I'm going to turn inland a bit here and as you can see on your radar display you actually have in the middle here this is your sort of velocity vector and a horizon so you can actually fly the plane heads down while you're scanning your radar so like there now we can level out and pitch up a little bit to get straight and level there we go and if we look up here we can see that oh, we're actually descending Oh, well, it's close enough anyway. We want it to actually be slightly above the line. Okay, so you've got you can actually fly this thing heads down. It also gives you our current airspeed in uh, in knots and also in Mach. And I think this is I'm not sure what 163 is, but this gives us our heading here. So currently we're about at 12120 heading. Yeah, that's right. So we can hit autopilot there, level off. And what we can do is look at the other mode. So I'm going to tilt my head down here. Okay, so you can see HFR on the top screen. That's our high mode that we discussed earlier. And if we hit Alt and I, we go into ENT mode, which is our intermediate. And then BFR, which is our low. So BFR essentially is a quiet way of scanning for radar. So it's a it's a low emission mode. And what it can do is it can actually you can you can see um, aircraft on your display. They'll show up as boxes, but you will not be able to identify the direction they're heading. Or get any detailed information on them until you switch to a either intermediate or high mode and actually then you can get more information on their heading altitude etc so BFR is more of a sort of covert mode of scanning if I understand it correctly feel free to correct me if in the comments below um, that's as far as I understand it um, so I think pretty much sums up the radar in the Mirage 2000C um, again if you've got a target locked up so right now while well, we're scanning way up into the air I don't know what happened there let's go right crazy okay so basically the other thing we can do is then as I said before when we we're doing our keybinds if you want to actually unlock a target you would use the home key which I had set I can't remember what the key bind was let's have a look quickly so weapon system command depress that is the key that you can press to unlock a target and return to scanning so that's another important one to learn um, as I said you can have your narrow field of view there you bind M for me and as you move your TDC left and right you can actually move the cone left and right as well and you've got your medium 
and your wide which essentially scans the whole cone but it's a lot slower as you can see your refresh rate is going to be a hell of a lot slower this could give you problems with maintaining a lock so i tend to keep it on middle at all times and sometimes i might narrow it down if i know a targets in a specific area um, i assume it's uh, more effective uh, maybe more powerful when working in a narrow cone but again i'm not entirely sure on that um, if you guys know any more info on that uh, it would be good to know in the comments below so that pretty much sums up the radar what we're going to do now in the next episode is we're actually going to use it against hostile targets that's it for this episode thanks for watching guys and we will catch you next week um, again if you like the video chuck that hit that like button subscribe for more content if you're enjoying this kind of stuff and again any input uh, feedback additional info would be greatly appreciated um, we'll see you guys next week thanks for watching